Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. And I'm just going to read two verses tonight, friends. And Paul is writing to Christians. He's writing to people who are saved. He's writing to people who have had that soul-saving, life-changing encounter that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And in one verse, the Apostle Paul reminds these Christians as to what they were and who they were before they were saved. And then in the next verse, he reminds them what they are and who they are now since they've got saved. Now it's Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 12. And Paul writes that, At that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to those two verses from his own precious truth tonight. There's one word tonight in the English dictionary, just one word, and it sums up tonight the, the inner cry and the inner longing of, of the human heart. One word, one word tonight that sums up the inner longing and the inner cry of, of the human soul. Just one word, one word tonight that sums up the inner cry and the inner longing of the human mind. Just one word. I believe this one word tonight is the great cry of today's world. And this word tonight, this one word, one word sums up tonight what people's looking for, but they can't find it. Maybe there's somebody in this tent tonight, and you're looking for this, but you can't find it. And this one word tonight appears in my text. I wonder tonight, does my text, or will my text, point to your heart tonight? And I believe it will. I believe my text tonight is going to sum up your life just as it is right now. Now what is my text? And what do I think tonight is going to sum up your life? I believe it's going to sum up the way you feel. I believe tonight it's going to sum up your great need. My tax tonight. Do you know what my tax says? And I'll tell you where you'll find it. You'll find it in the last wee phrase or the last sentence of of verse number 12 of Ephesians chapter 2. Now what does my text say tonight that I'm so confident that it sums up the way you think and most of all the way you live? Now what does it say? It says this tonight. Having no hope and without God in the world. Wonders at you tonight. Do you know, friends, that people in this world and people in this town and perhaps people in this tent tonight, and you're searching for hope, but you can't find it. I was talking to a man the other day, and he says, I hope. He says, the only hopes I know is Bob Hope, and no hope, and I'm Bob's there. I wonder tonight, is that 
is that the longing of your heart? Is that the longing of your soul tonight? Hope. Hope tonight that's real. Hope tonight that's genuine. Maybe you're here tonight, love. And you're sick and you're tired of seeing hope that you thought was hope vanish into a thousand pieces. Hope that wasn't real. Having no hope tonight, and without God in the world, wonder does that sum you up this evening? Is that you tonight, having no hope? Without God in the world. I want you, first of all, to see the reality of that text. Because this is what it begins to say. Having no hope. That's how the other people live today. <coughs> Having no hope. There's so many people today and they have hope tonight. But they've got their hope in the wrong things. People tonight hope in some sort of religion. They put their hope in on money. They put their hope in possessions. But all these things tonight don't offer real hope. I know a man one day and I still know him. And way back in 1984, back in 19, it was May 1984, this man was seriously injured in an incident. And this man didn't know what he was worth in money, he didn't know what he was worth in land, he didn't know what he was worth. And this man was involved in an incident. And it left him paralyzed from the chest down. From that day to this day, that man never had feeling from his chest down. I remember me and my father and another man going to see him in hospital shortly after this incident. You know what he said to me? You know what he said to us? He says, I would give every penny I have. I would give every inch of my land. I would give everything away that I own just to get out of bed and to switch the TV off over there. Money wasn't good to him. Realised, friend, then and there that what use was money to him now? And yet not so many tonight place their hope on money. Place their hope on religion. Place their hope on this and place their hope on something else. Having no hope. Wonder is this you tonight? This world hungers for hope tonight. And tonight countless of people are on the verge of giving up because they can't find it. Find real hope. Wonder is that you tonight? Never you mind the person sitting next to you. Never you mind the person that you're with tonight. Would God be speaking to your heart and saying that you're on the verge of giving up? You've tried this and you've tried that and you've tried the other thing. And tonight that's you having no hope. You know, friends, tonight, listen to me. It's an awful way to live. Having no hope. There's people who go to bed every night having no hope. There's people getting up in the morning having no hope. There's people going through out the day having no hope. Wonders at you tonight. Every day, no hope. Having no hope in life is bad. Having no hope in death tonight. Now, friend, that's something you need to think about. Having no hope in 
lifespan. But having no hope in death, and you know, friend, death could come at any moment. Death could come at any second. And this is you facing death, right? Having no hope. Having no hope in life. Having no hope in death. Having no hope in eternity. <coughs> having no hope, friend. As you face the great eternity. Is that you tonight? Having no hope. And God only knows you've searched for hope. God only knows that you long for hope. God only knows how you need hope tonight. Is that the reality of your life, love? And is that the reality of your life, dear? Having no hope. Now, if you look at that wee text again, not only do you have the reality of the text, but you have the reason for the text too. Having no hope. Now, here's the reason. Without God in the world, it's not the way you're living the minute. Having no hope without God in the world, is that how you're going to die, sir? Having no hope without God in the world. Is that how you're going to go into eternity, friends? Having no hope without God in the world. For many, many's dying like that. Many's been buried like that. Having no hope without God in the world. That's how people live today. The thing called God, there's no such thing as God. So what you believe in it? Ah, sure, only a fool believes in God. Only a fool thinks there's a God. I'll tell you what the Bible says, the fool have said in his heart that there's no God. Don't you think that a man or a woman who believes there's a God is a fool? The Bible who says that a man who says there is no God, that man's the fool. I hope tonight you're not a fool to believe there's no God. So many people live their lives today without God. There's a man called Billy Murray. And Billy Murray was raised under the auspices of an atheistic mother. His mother in 1963 got a law passed in one of the states of America to have prayer banned from public schools. And Billy Murray was grown up in, under this atheistic empire. But there came a time when Billy Murray was so disillusioned, he was so depressed, he came to the end of himself. And when Billy Murray came to the end of himself, that's when he found the beginning of God. Sometimes man has to come to the end of himself. To find the beginning of God, that God really does exist. Do you know what Billy Murray did? Billy Murray, out of total desperation and cried out, God, if you're there and you exist, come and help me. And God did. Billy Murray wrote a book called My Life Without God. It's not you think. My Life Without God. And the next day there came a wee leaflet through the door and it just simply was entitled God Loves You. And Billy Murray took that wee leaflet and read that wee leaflet and Billy Murray got saved. Billy Murray, friend, was a man who lived a life without God until God brought him to the end of himself. Listen, God might have to bring you to the end of yourself, sir. For God to see, for you to see that God's really there, and God does exist. 
Let me say something tonight, friend. Is that the way you're living? Having no hope without God in the world. Is that the way you're dying? Without hope. Without God in the world. You know, friends, this, this evening, listen to me. You know what your problem is? Your problem tonight is what the Bible calls sin. Your greatest problem is sin. And tonight you're living with no hope, without God in the world because of sin. And tonight you're dying having no hope and without God in the world because of sin. And at this very moment you're going to face eternity having no hope without God in the world because of sin. And sin tonight is the world's greatest problem. And sin tonight is your greatest problem. But thank God tonight there's an answer. And thank God tonight, real hope can be found. And real hope tonight can be found, not in a church. Real hope tonight is not found in a creed either. Real hope is not found in money. Real hope is not found in what you own. You know where real, real hope is found? Real hope is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where real hope is found tonight. If you had told me that about six weeks before they became a Christian, I would have said your head was gone. Real hope found in the Lord Jesus Christ? Nonsense. Nonsense. I remember being asked to go to the mission just like this. And I remember working for a man and he almost put his hand up my back to get me to go to the mission. And I went against my will. And I just said to myself, I'll close my ears till you get this air over me. And that's it and get out of here. But do you see that night when the man got up to preach and the group got up to sing first? Friend, it was as if God opened my ears and I first of, for the first time heard. Hold on a minute. This is where real hope is found. This is where real peace is found. This is where real life is found. It's found in a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, but if you take a look in the next verse, you've got, the, you've got this evening the remedy uh, concerning this real hope tonight. But now in Christ, listen tonight, between you and me in this tent, if it doesn't blow away, that is, between you and me in this tent, let me tell you where real hope is found. Real hope. Real hope tonight is found in a person, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Real hope's not found in a religion. Real hope's not found in a religion at all. Real hope tonight is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that song, in Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. I'm telling you, friend, if you want real hope tonight, and you've been searching for it all these years, I can tell you your searching stops tonight. For real hope is found in the Lord Jesus. You know why? Because the Lord Jesus is the answer to the world's greatest problem. The Lord Jesus Christ is the answer to your greatest problem. Your greatest problem is sin. Ah, but I'll tell you this, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. He went all the way to Calvary's cross. Crucified he was, bearing shame and scoffing rude, in our place condemned his food. And there on Calvary's cross he shed his precious blood. So tonight that we could find real hope, real peace, real Forgiveness, real life in him. And you know, friend, this evening I want to point you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you the Lord Jesus Christ offers you a threefold hope that's real. First of all, he offers you hope. Hope for the past. You say to me, George, how on earth do I need hope for the past? I need hope for the here and now. I need hope for the future. How do I need hope for the past? You need hope for the past because you have a sinful past. You know those men can't live for themselves because of what they don't. Well, in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll find real hope for your past. Because in him tonight, there is forgiveness of sin. 
In him tonight there's cleansing from sin. In him tonight he can free you from your past. Not only does he offer real hope for the past, he offers real hope for the present. Oh, friend, he offers real hope for the present. What does the psalmist say? The psalmist says, Happy is the man whose hope is in the Lord. I'm telling you, see, you Christians, put a smile in your face. With everyone to smile about, our hope is in the Lord. Happy is the man whose hope is in the Lord. Oh, friend, smile if you're saved tonight. You know, you and I have ever been trying of God to hope for you and I are the Christians tonight. Man, we've ever been to smile about, heaven to sing about, and heaven like boys like me to shout about because we've hope. If you all see a pay person, you can't smile like me because you are without hope. And you're without God in the world. But I'll tell you something else. He not only has given me hope for the past, hope for the present, thank God he's given me hope for the future. Friend, my hope is not only just for the past, my hope's not just for the present. Glory to God, my hope's for the future. You know what the Apostle Peter said? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and one that faileth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen, do you see the, the hope the world gives you? It crumbles of death. Crumbles of death. Disappears of death. See the hope I have? It takes me beyond death. It takes me beyond the grave. The hope that I have tonight takes me right into heaven itself. You see, friend, that's the hope the Lord Jesus Christ gives this evening. Being justified by his grace, we have hope of eternal life. You know, way back in 1991, you say to yourself, I have had so many of well, I have a good memory. As part of, uh, just as well as good looks, I've got a good memory. And I remember way back in 1991, I had a cousin whose husband was dead. And I remember being at the wake, and he had died from cancer. And I remember there was a wee phrase that they used at the wake, and his wife, which was my cousin, had this to say, you know, like, well, you know what it was, where there's life, Sure, there's always hope, and we'll hope to the very end. But listen to me, life doesn't guarantee you hope. No, it's not where there is life, there is hope. Listen, where there is Christ, there is hope. Tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the hope for your heart tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's the hope for your soul tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's the hope tonight for your mind. Is there hope tonight beyond this world's wickedness? Is there hope beyond this world of sin? Is there hope beyond, beyond the gloom and darkness of this world that we live in? Is there hope beyond my life of sorrow? Is there hope beyond my life of pain? Is there hope beyond my, my loneliness? A hope that I can gain. Is there hope beyond my heartbreak? Is there hope for me to see? Is there hope beyond my nightmares? A hope that holds on to me. There is a hope beyond life's nightmares. There's a hope beyond all price. A hope that outshines the darkest gloom. That hope the night is spread. Is there real hope tonight to be found. Let me tell you, friend, on the authority of God's Word tonight, there is real hope to be found tonight. And that hope tonight is in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who lived, the one who died, the one who rose again from the dead. And tonight he's in this tent, and he wants to give you tonight not a false hope, but a real hope, a real hope for your past, a real hope for your present, and a real hope tonight, a real hope for your future. Listen, I'm telling you, before I cut, I'm telling you, this real hope tonight is found 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died that you may have this hope. He rose again from the dead that you can have this hope. And tonight, this hope can be yours. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, we read, For we have an hope which is an anchor of the soul, sure and steadfast, anchored within the veil. Thank God the hope that I have is a hope for them. Thank God that I have a hope tonight that's a hope for dying. And thank God I have a hope tonight that is a hope that lies in eternity. My hope tonight is anchored tonight in heaven. And it's a real hope. If you're searching for hope tonight, real hope, that hope tonight is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. That hope tonight can be yours this evening. And I pray and I trust that if you're searching for real hope tonight, that you'll find it this very evening in the lovely person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer, please. You know, maybe tonight you're here in this gospel mission. This is our opening night. Listen tonight, you're not here by chance this evening. And tonight perhaps you've been troubled over these last weeks and God only knows perhaps the sleepless nights that you've had. And you've been searching and you've been wondering and you've been looking here, there and everywhere for real hope, lasting hope. Now I wonder tonight, do you really want this hope this evening? It can be yours if you'd come to the Lord Jesus. And from this evening, tonight he's here and he's He's listening to your very heart at this very moment. He's reading your thoughts. And most of all, he's speaking to you and saying, Real hope is found in me. Come to me and trust me. and Turn away from that life of sin. Let me into your heart. And I will give you real hope this evening. I trust that you'll do that. And Lord, we just leave the eternal issues of this meeting with thee. For it's in thy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing.